on this episode of the Oklahoma Breakdown with Hacker and Layman, presented by Riverwind Casino. We break down OU's 2024 SEC schedule. Then we discuss Jordy Ball entering the transfer portal and give you our winners and losers of the week. Please download and subscribe to the podcast. Rate it five stars and write us a good review. Follow the show on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Just search Oklahoma Breakdown on any of those and you'll find us. All right. Our man Michael Hosty will kick this thing off. It's time for the Oklahoma Breakdown. It's a beautiful Thursday, June 15th. And you're listening to the Oklahoma Breakdown with Iker and Lehman, presented by River Wind Casino. Riverwind is Oklahoma City's premier casino experience, and there are so many reasons why Riverwind is consistently voted OKC's number one casino. But it all starts with their amazing variety of gaming thrills and excitement. Riverwind's beautiful, award-winning environment plays host to more than 2,800 of the latest electronic games with a huge selection of table games, including Blackjack, Blackjack Match Roulette, and Teddy's favorite, Craps. No matter what your game, Riverwind has it in spades and hearts. And to learn more about their gaming promotions and entertainment options in the month of June, all you got to do is visit Riverwind.com. Riverwind Casino, simply the best. Now recording this on Wednesday night. Ted, what a day. What a day, baby. Let's go. Incredible. Simply incredible, Gabe Eichard. Um, (laughs) The only bad thing is with the schedule release, it feels like we're right there, like it's about to happen. We've, We've got some time, folks, but still amazing. I... I guess I I was about to say I couldn't be happier. I could be happier with some stuff on the schedule, but I think it's awesome. I love I, it. I I could tell you this for sure. OU's SEC, the inaugural SEC schedule being released is the perfect cure for jet lag. I, really? I, I'm not even tired, really. Energized. Landed, land. We flew home from Scotland. Ended up getting home at 5 p.m. Central Time. A little nervous? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Made it to Norman by about 5.45 ish. And then we did the show. And I'm feeling good, man. Six hour time difference over there. And feel I'm not even tired look at me that this is what the sec schedule does to a person apparently let's go well you're 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 flying off of emotions and fumes right now you've got a crash landing in your near future i think yeah right right <laughs> after we get done with this but yeah, all right let's let's dive into it so the sooners get their schedule for the 2024 sec season and just the opponents we don't have dates but we've got who the Sooners are going to play in Norman and who they will go on the road to take on. Uh, let's start with the home games, Ted. Alabama, big, bad Bama coming to Norman, Tennessee coming to Norman, South Carolina. And then the fourth home game. OU will be the home home team against Texas there in the red river rivalry, which by the way, we were instructed to start calling it that again. So I I never stopped calling it that, but turns out it's going to go back to that official name. I I, I don't have to change anything because I've always called it that. I think I have too. Um, I'm not sure. I don't even know what it was last year. Was it Showdown? Okay. It's, We're back to rivalry. That's fine. I'm okay with that, I guess. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Bama, Tennessee, South Carolina. Man, you just compared to the schedule, the home schedule this season. What? Iowa State, West Virginia, TCU. Which one am I forgetting? There's one more, but UCF. You oh, how could I forget? Sorry, UCF. All it, former non power five teams except for Iowa State. It's just it's night and day, man. Yeah. And ultimately. You think, why? Why did Oklahoma do this? Why'd they make this decision? Looking at that, what that home schedule is going to look like. That's why. That's it. Yep. No doubt. And 
you know, it is it is interesting, you know, that the the OU Texas game is the best rivalry in all of sports. We love the venue. Uh everything about the game every year is special. It's it's just awesome. But it does come with some big drawbacks, you know, and having that game neutral site every year, like we just have the three three conference home games next year. Like that is not optimal, right? Not optimal, not how you would want it. Um, but you know, I'm assuming when Texas is the home team, it's gonna flip for us and we'll have the four. Um, so we'll kind of alternate back and forth between that. That kind of makes you want that nine game conference schedule, doesn't it? It does. And I'm pretty confident that you're only getting a year or two of the eight game schedule. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Is it ideal? No, just like you mentioned, but I think it's a short term situation, right? I, I really do think the sec wants to get a year or two of data or just you know kind of comfortability with the expanded playoff and what that all is going to look like but yeah when you just see oh wait they're only getting three sec conference games on owen field it yeah it it does look a little weird when you just look at it on paper because yeah. it says home texas and every ou fans going that what that game's in dallas that, that, that doesn't count but right. you've got the two looking at the 2024 schedule as a whole Right, you've got Temple and Tulane. They're going to come to Norman, and then you've got two open spots, right? Where OU's got to go find someone to come to Norman and play them, right? Since you're only going to have those three, you would think the you would try to get those other two to be home games, right? Yeah, yeah, and it it's late in the game. It's more difficult to get non-conference game scheduled than I guess you would imagine especially whenever it's this late the handful of teams that have open schedules I'm sure are going to make a really really strong counter offer to whatever it is that we say we'll pay him to come play a game right like <laughs> knowing that we're kind of under the gun uh it's probably going to cost us a pretty penny there's no doubt about it Here's my prediction okay. for Bama in 2024. They're going to be a really talented football team, and they're going to be very well coached. They will have early round draft picks all over the field. Going too too far out on a limb, I feel I feel pretty confident in that assessment. Yeah, yeah, that's probably going to be right. Um, I, I don't know if it'll be Milrow or Simpson or Buckner at quarterback, maybe Eli Holstein right there, 2023 signee. Yeah. I got no idea. That's kind of the interesting thing. Like it feels like their quarterback situation right now is, is, um, you know, undecided as it's been like previously they've had, you know, some movement there, but it was usually because, a young guy was so good, right? Like with the two in in hurt situation, like right now, it, it almost we're led to believe that they don't have anyone at quarterback. That I think that's going to be fixed by the time they come to Norman. They're going to know who their guy is for sure. Yeah, and when you look at it, they had the number one ranked recruiting class in twenty twenty one the number two ranked recruiting class in 2022 and the number one recruiting class ranked recruiting class in 2023. They're going to have a lot of good football players on their team. It's been that way for a while there. So a team unlike any other that we have seen, you know, maybe you put 2016 Ohio state, right. In that conversation, that's going to be, a roster that looks unlike anything OU fans have seen on that field in a very long time. I don't, it, and that game is going to feel massive, massive. Yeah. And I don't, we assume it would be awesome if that's OU's first SEC game. Yeah. Right? Put that in prime time. Well, uh, you know, here's the thing I, we're going to have to play them. 
I'd rather play them right out of the gate, like game two of the season, than I would playing them mid season or even late season. I have them, agree. have them guessing a little bit as to what we've been cooking up in the off season to throw at them. Um, I'm assuming Jackson Arnold's going to be starting quarterback. You don't want them to build an entire book on what, what he's got and how we're going to use him. Um, I'd prefer to play that game early. Problem is the rest of that difficult roster or a schedule rather is going to, going to, there's not going to be any surprises for them. So, but you know, that's just how it's going to be from now on. And there, I think everyone's probably going to go through excitement with all the great games and then some trepidation in there, right? Like, Oh boy, this it, is different. It's exactly how I responded when I saw the schedule, because I am so used to looking at Oklahoma's schedule, looking at the Texas game and going, Hey, you never know. And then looking at essentially every other game and going, when, 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 uh, that could be a tough road trip. When, 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 like, that's what we've known. For years and years. That that is not the reaction I have when I look at this schedule. Right. And I I assume I'm not alone in that in feeling that way, but that's that's the new reality until Venables and that staff can really stack the roster with talent. And that's going to take time, but they're gonna be playing some teams that have better players than they do and that is not something we're used to yeah which you know coach Venables was up there tonight and talked about you know they continue to improve the roster and that's true um you're it doesn't matter what happens between now and the game against Alabama you will not have a better roster than Alabama. It does not matter what happens between now and then. Um, it's just not going to happen. I Alabama's roster right now, like just looking at like five star recruits and like class rankings, it's probably the in the best position it's ever been. All right, with the, all the number one recruiting classes, the amount of five star kids that they have now. Tennessee, I mean. If you want to go off recruiting rankings, you should be you should be close. LSU, if you want to go off recruiting rankings, you should be close. But I think you and I would probably both agree right now that there's more SEC ready football players on Tennessee's roster and LSU's roster than there is Oklahoma's roster and probably by a large margin. There is work to be done. Yep. There, there's there's absolutely work to be done and that that's what makes this exciting like it it's a new challenge right for players coaches fans it's a new challenge for everyone it's real like it's right there you can look at it right all of yeah. the speculation is over if anyone was thinking about just you know hanging around letting time pass a little bit before you really get geared up like that's over it's on the slate yeah and we'll We'll get into what the fans, like, the, the role the fans will play here moving forward and what, and what they need to do. But that Tennessee game, Josh Heupel homecoming, man, that there could be, there could be quite a bit of emotion before that game. I'm hoping we butter him up. We got to throw everything some, we got at him. We got – you got to throw the sappy welcome home Josh video. You got to do it. You got to do it. We got to, we got to get in his head before kickoff. Right, we got to like, have some like big goofy, like, like what's the stuff? Like <sighs> you make like a big statue out of like, it's not paper mache. Is it paper mache? Is that right? Like, yeah. You got to have yeah. like a, a 14 out there. Some like we've, we've got to, do everything we can to get his mind off the game. It's going to be frustrating as hell for him, but that's got to be our goal. Every yeah. time out, hypo highlights playing in the in the stadium, all his former teammates lining the visitor sideline whenever they walk in, just everything we got. And that will be a fun aspect of that game, but also 
on one sideline, in all likelihood, you're going to have Jackson Arnold starting at quarterback. And on the other one, you're probably going to have Nico Iamaliava. I mean, two of the highest ranked recruit, the recruits at the quarterback position in their recruiting class. And whoever wins that one, that's going to feel like a big time win, right? Especially we'll see where it ends up falling in the schedule. If that one's early, that could be a, could be a huge springboard game for either of those guys, which is, you know, ju you're just thinking about storylines as we look at this schedule. That could be a fun one. Yeah. You know, just looking at it right now, I, that's the one thing that I would say is quarterback wise, like depending on who Bama has at the time, right? I think you're probably right on Tennessee. South Carolina is going to be breaking in a new queue. Um, LSU is going to be breaking in a new queue. We'll see what Auburn has figured out. I, it's not a murderer's row of quarterbacks, you know, like a USC is about to face this year out in the Pac-12, you know, and it's, as we look at it right now, you're not, you're not shaking in your boots at quarterback um, with any of the teams. Now, obviously that could change whenever we see the young kid from Tennessee, he may be otherworldly, LSU, I think is going to do a good job being more consistent and probably uh, finding some better quarterback play. So we'll see, but I mean, that's, that's one notable thing about it right now. Yeah. So overall home slate, how you feeling? Bama, Tennessee, South Carolina. Fantastic. If you're only getting three, if you're only getting three, that's a solid three. It's, it's a solid three. There's tons of storylines there. Um, you're getting the elite of the elite. You want, you get the measuring stick right out of the gate. At least I, I'm, I think it's going to be early in the season. Maybe it's not, but you're going to get to measure yourself against the best. Um, you got an up and coming Tennessee that is got some attitude behind them all of the sudden and a South Carolina team that continues to, to improve, man. And we've never played South Carolina. It's that's a first. So I think you're going to get three big fan bases that are probably going to travel into Oklahoma. So that's going to be fun to mix it up with those fan bases. I think it's great. Is, is Shane Beamer our enemy now? No. Okay. Not, not until we play the final game of 2023. Okay. You think he'll still come on the podcast? <laughs> probably. he probably yeah. come on the podcast the week of the game. That's true. He's the man. He's but just the greatest guy ever. He will be our sworn enemy that Saturday. That's right. But that is, I mean, he's he's doing some really good things there. We'll we'll see if they continue, you know, because they've lost some guys in the portal over the last couple of seasons, like really, really good players. Mm -hmm. But it seems like the momentum is headed in a really good direction for him. It seems like they're recruiting really well, you know, heading into this cycle. So We'll we'll see, but yeah, I mean, you look at it and you go, "Oh, easiest home conference game is South Carolina." That's a bit different, man. But I mean, you look at it, the home and away of the eight conference opponents. Like, who knows at the time? But for top twenty-five, Bama, yes, Tennessee, yes. South Carolina, I, I would assume, yes. Uh, Texas, yes. LSU, yes. Ole Miss, probably. Auburn and Missouri are your wild cards, right? Now, we look at our schedule this year. Texas may be the only top 25 team we play. Different. Different. It is different. Okay, the away games. Auburn, LSU, Ole Miss, and Missouri. Death Valley at night, right? I mean, come on. It's got it. They got to put it at night. Come on. If, if, if we're winning games and they're winning games, it'll be at night. All right. I mean, I, now, now let me make something clear. Going and playing there at night probably is not the best way for OU to win that game. 
<laughs> I think everyone would agree that like 11 a.m. kickoff would be a good one for 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 the Sooners for that one. But I I am I you have rubbed off on me, Ted. If we're gonna go to LSU and we're gonna experience that fan base, I want to. I want it all. Just give it, give me it at night. Give me the at their most lubed up. I want to, I want to feel the hate. Give me the hate. Give it all to me. I want to shower yep. in the hate. It's going to taste and smell like beer, but you will probably will shower in it. <laughs> probably literally going to happen, Gabe. <laughs> but hey, for a road slate, our fans have been wanting some some places to go. We've never played at LSU. We've never played at Ole Miss. We've never played at Auburn. Right out of the gate. Three of your four, you've never played in their stadium before. That That's as much as you can ask for, right? Yeah. I mean, you wanted something new. Here you go. Sooners Start fans. fueling up the RVs. Let's go. Get Get the frequent flyer miles. Get them loaded up. Buy a buy a fuel efficient vehicle to get you to get you to some of these places or what? What I don't know. But looking at looking at the away slate, clearly LSU at night. Like that's, I think that's kind of the pinnacle of going on the road in the SEC, right? Of the experience for a fan for a player, but. From a fan perspective, Ole Miss, like the Grove is supposed to be one of the coolest experiences for fans tailgating like that entire yeah. atmosphere. That's supposed to be top notch. So, yeah, that's got to be incredibly exciting for the fan base. Right out of the gate. Year one, you get to see perhaps the most daunting. You get to see the biggest party uh, atmosphere, supposedly. And I honestly, what, what more could you ask for? I think it's great. Going to be tough. There's no doubt about it. It's going to be a challenge. Um, but man, I honestly feel like one of the reasons we're kind of where we are is it just as a, as a fan base, as an administration, as a program, I think, think we've just kind of been on cruise control right just kind of uninterested falling asleep at the wheel ready for some excitement and i think i think this this type of competition this type of you know the road atmospheres i think it's going to wake this program up that's my hope anyways yeah it it better (laughs) <laughs> or else you look at it on paper. If it doesn't, right? If the uh, clearly the players and coaches have to arrive prepared, but if the fans are prepared, it could it could get rough, right? That's just a that's the new reality. But yep. I, I when I look at the schedule and you look at what these teams are going to be in 2023, you look at what they were in 2022, Auburn is the biggest question mark. Right, hire Hugh Freeze, new coach, and you look at their roster and what people are expecting them to be in 2023. Uh, it's a ton of transfer guys and a, t- a ton of old dudes. A uh, day and you know Peyton Thorne comes in from Michigan State. The assumption is he'll be their quarterback for 2023, but uh, will it be Robbie Ashford in 2022? It will be some type of transfer? I I don't know. But that roster, out of anyone, I I feel like I know the least about what that team's going to look like in 2024. It's kind of kind of a mystery. Well, yeah, and it's not just because of, like, what's happened now. Like, the last couple, it's just been a weird couple of years for Auburn. Been incredibly quiet. They neutered their coach previously by trying to get him fired. Uh, impossible to put a recruiting class together whenever everyone thinks your coach isn't going to be around. So they're down on talent from where they traditionally are. But you, we could say whatever we want about Hugh Freeze. He he can recruit. 
He can put a roster together and he can typically build a, a pretty productive offense. Yeah. And one thing we did learn, it sounds like OU's getting these teams, right? Including the Texas game, right? So you look at the other seven, then they're gonna get they're gonna get the other seven in 2025. That's how I understood it at least. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the same. I don't know. Because OU and Texas don't play any of the same teams in 2024. Right. So it seems like they'll just flip them, which means yep. 2025 is going to be Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Mississippi State, Arkansas, A&M, and Bandy. I, a lot of new. A lot of new. As you look at it right now, it's the easier slate, but things change and they change quickly. Yeah. Um, you know, Georgia's in there. There ain't nothing easy about that. Right. So um it's it's gonna be two years that are gonna feel like we just played twenty two straight non conference games. <laughs> you know? There's gonna be like because you got no history with most of them. It's like they're all gonna be one off, haven't played at their place, we haven't hosted them. It's gonna be other than the OU Texas game, it's gonna everything's gonna be strange. It's gonna be a new regular season that kind of also feels like just a bowl game each week. Yeah. Like, but yep. you're going, but they're coming to your place, you're going to their place. It's gonna be it's gonna be strange, but it's it's so exciting. And the timing of the release is very beneficial for OU, right? Got Champion Barbecue coming up this weekend. It has turned into OU's biggest recruiting weekend for those elite guys that they're really targeting. What Venables told us, 29 guys yep. coming in for Champion Barbecue. And now you can take this schedule. It's your schedule, boys. Say, hey, your first year in college, Bam is coming to town. Don't want to hear any more about it. Don't want to hear any more about you got to play in this league. You, you know, the. I, they can't use any of it against you anymore, right? Awesome. Yeah, but I guess the last thing is radio guys, everyone, players, coaches, fans, got to step it up. Collectively, all of us, the entire OU football family. And it starts with the atmosphere outside of the stadium on game day yeah and inside the gate the stadium yeah on game day tailgating and i saw president harris said hey things are going to change venables told us things are going to change gonna ramp it up and it needs to get ramped up in a big way because i do think i do think there are some of you fans that aren't fully aware of what life in the SEC in the SEC is going to be like and just how passionate a lot of these fan bases are and we are we're going to hear stuff like hey oh you fans they they're not SEC ready like there's going to be stuff like that said and it's up to all of us to prove those people wrong and to shut those people up and that that needs to start in 2023, right? We got to start training ourselves, Ted. We start we got to start getting ready for 2024. You got to practice before you play, baby. That's it. Start practicing. Let's uh let's get this thing ramped up, which by the way, I'm curious to see what those ticket sales are looking like. Don't you think for, substantial, uh, I would yeah, imagine. Got to be. Got to be. Um yeah, I, I agree. Everything's got to be cranked up, man, across the board. We got to get our NIL game right. We got to get on the to to the level of the the competition. Like you look at these these NILs at Alabama, at Tennessee, at LSU, I these schools are piling cash in for for recruit and for portal guys. I that's the name of the game, man. This is it. I, we got to crank that up. We got to crank the in stadium atmosphere. Which you know, I'm not. I'm not worried about the. In, are you worried about the in stadium atmosphere when Alabama comes to town? I, 
I am not, but I do think there's going to be an adjustment period because, and this is stuff you and I have seen throughout the years. If you're one of those people that tells maybe the younger, rowdier people in front of you to sit down because you're having trouble seeing, you need to stop. <laughs> that ain't a thing anymore. Stand your yeah. ass up. Make some noise. Yeah, that's how I, it's going to be. That that is, There's going to be some people that are going to need that they are going to need to adjust the way they conduct themselves in the stadium. Don't get mad at the people going crazy. That's what we need. Now, within reason, of course. Let's not be ridiculous. But yeah, we we can't have people just sitting on their hands all game, man. That is yeah. that is not what we're looking for this stadium to be. I you know, I I am willing to give our fan base a pass with with the schedules that we've had, with the kickoff times that we've had. It's hard to bring it. Let's be honest. It's hard to bring it for six or seven days a year, man. Come on. Well, okay. Come on, man. I get that point. And and that point is true. No, but I I agree. The games – the home like, slates have not been energizing, right? No. And it there's our fans when when Ohio State came to town, fantastic, great atmosphere. When Notre Dame came to town, incredible atmosphere. We let you down, fans. I'm sorry. That was that was by far the best atmosphere I played in in too that great, stadium. Too great. I mean, electric. When, when we have a big game that means something that is you know not just a big name but someone's got a little number next to them and we got a little number next to our name and this is national championship type deciding stuff if you lose this one you're not going to be able to go our fans show up in a big way so i'm not really i'm not really worried about it but we still need to practice it yeah got to get ready practice it got to get ready use 2023 use Use all the games where we got better players than everyone coming to town. Use those games to get ready. That's that's fair, right? Should we should like force our non-conference opponents to wear like Alabama's uniform or you know, like, like hey, like, would you like to wear these throwbacks? You could wear these Tennessee unis, right? We <laughs> we got we'll pay you extra. Yeah. All right, let's get to call your shot. We asked you guys what what game on the schedule had you most excited? This first one comes from Stacy Bates, I think. Stacy Bates, who says Alabama first test to see how far we've come in skill and toughness. Let's go. Yeah, that's that's it. That's measuring. That's, it's going to be a it's going to be a game where you see where you're at. Okay, this other one comes from Big Missouri Sooner who says Tennessee at home will be our true measuring stick at home in our first year. I think we can win. If we lose, we'll be in an above average conference team. If we win, I see a one loss best case or two loss next best case team, maybe a playoff berth. Hmm. That's an interesting way of looking at, right? Tennessee at 11 win team last year, right? But did it in, I know the divisions are going away, but they're 11 win team that didn't even play for the conference title. Put a bunch yeah. of draft picks out. That's just, so if you are looking for a measuring stick in 2024, that's a game at home you got to win if you want to be competitive in the SEC. Alabama, that's, man, they, they're going to have the most talented roster in all of college football that year. Factoring are. in an upward trend of our football team from six and seven, right? <laughs> we better be on an upward upward trend. Um, I think I I can put a check next to every game as winnable, except for Alabama. And I'm not suggesting we can't win that game. I'm just suggesting that we aren't going to have any advantages. Right. Right. Other than 
It's in our stadium. Other than it's in our stadium. Their roster is going to be far superior. It's hard to ever offer up a coaching advantage against Nick Saban. You know, it's it's that's going to be incredibly tough. But Tennessee will be a winnable football game. South Carolina, Texas, even LSU, not going to be easy to win on the road. But I, that's a game that you can win. If we continue the upward trend, if we continue to uh, get a better, deeper roster, if we continue to get a better, tougher, more physical defense, winnable games. I no margin, it. no margin for error. Very little margin for error. And the only thing is those road games, these players, they haven't. They haven't gone and played in those environments. The only thing that's you could probably say is relatable is how the Cotton Bowl is. Yeah. But in the Cotton Bowl, half the people are on your side. Yeah. Dude, I a big road game, though, is so incredible. Yes. It's so incredible. As a player, to be in the pit like with – a hundred thousand against you, like to me, that's that's whenever it's the easiest to play your best football. Yeah, it is. It's exciting. This feels Love this it. feels exciting. It's gonna be fun. Yep. Now let's let's put a good twenty twenty three together first, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> We could be feeling a whole lot different about that schedule if if uh, we limp out of 23. And well, we could be feeling a whole lot different either way. Yeah. Right? It could be a whole lot different. Like, hey, we're not feeling confident. Could Venables be going into the his first season in the SEC on the hot seat? Like, it could be that. Or it could be, hey, OU... They're back on track. They won a Big 12 championship, made the playoff. Maybe you lose. Maybe I, I, I don't think OU is capable of winning a national title this year, but, hey, you never know. We just watched TCU play for a national championship. So, but, yeah, 2023 is going to dictate a lot of how we feel going into that. I mean, that, clearly going into that year. And I would prefer that we're feeling good about ourselves. When we, when we make the transition. Yep. Me too. Let's go. Keep improving. Birthday shout outs. Welcome to the world. Jackson Stone. Balak. Baluk. Yeah. Balak. B-A-L-U-K. Baluk. Yeah, I've never seen that last name in my life. Baluk. Balak. Yeah. Baluk. Baluk. Yeah. Balak. Bollock. Is that it? Yeah. And then Madeline Pearl Janine Bollock. Happy, happy fourth birthday to Cason Woods. I'm going Cason. That's double S. That's, you that's sure? Cason all day. Yeah. Okay. Dang it. <laughs> I don't know. We're off to we a bad start. Idiots. Happy fourth birthday to Cason Woods. Happy ninth birthday to Quintus Maytubby. Happy 14th birthday to Honesty, May Tubby. Happy 28th birthday to Trevor Petway. Happy 39th birthday to Carrie Bailey. Happy 40th birthday to Big 4 0 to Todd Young. Happy 51st birthday to Tracy Coltenbacher. Happy birthday to Brian Cheese Sellers. Cheese. Happy fifth anniversary to Trevor and Katie Petway. I I thought we were done doing football guys talking softball, but mm. some mm. pretty substantial news. Yep. Yep. But first, Love's Travel Stops is now offering a nationwide 10 cent per gallon discount on gas and auto diesel. Just download the Loves Connect app and scan your barcode at the prompt on screen and watch that price drop 10 cents per gallon. 
Across the country, the Loves Connect app unlocks exclusive deals can help any traveler plan their route or meal on the highway. So before you hit the road, be sure to download the Loves Connect app to save 10 cents per gallon and experience the country's best highway hospitality at Loves Travel Stops. Loves also has you covered if you forget your phone charger or headphones with an expanded mobile to go zone. And of course, don't forget to grab yourself some of that delicious Java Hamare. Opolis Clothing is the exclusive home for all of our Oklahoma breakdown merchandise and is the best place to get your OU and OKC Thunder gear as well. If you want to live your life in buttery soft comfort, go to opolisclothing.com. That's O P. O-L-I-S clothing.com. Use promo code TED, T-E-D, for 10% off your entire order. That's opolisclothing.com and use promo code TED for 10% off. Buttery soft and 10% off. And hey, you hungry out there? Well, then head to the garage for hand-smashed patties, butter-toasted buns, and ice-cold beer. Their food is fantastic, and it is the perfect spot to watch any big game. Visit eatatthegarage.com to find a location near you and order online from the garage in your neighborhood. Ted, Jordy Ball is leaving Oklahoma to go play in Nebraska. And I don't like it. <laughs> I, You know, the rumors were swirling. And then there was a lot of smoke. And then she released her statement on Twitter. I mean, what, what was your initial reaction, man? Um, when I first heard the rumor, I thought, well, you know, here's the thing. Jordy has always been, you can tell that she misses home. You can tell that she's, um, she loves she loves where she's from. She's passionate about it. it. It's always just kind of been hanging there whenever you see her or you hear her, her talk about it or like you see her social media posts. So I guess I'd never considered it, but whenever I first heard the rumor, I thought, hmm, I, I, I would be surprised if that happens, but, you know, she always does kind of give off the vibe that she wants to be back home in Nebraska, that she really misses it. So that's kind of what I first thought. And then whenever it happened, um, my first thought was how good can Nebraska be with her pitching? Um, and I thought, and maybe this is dumb, but I, maybe – this team needs something like that as as a like a, something to really drive them to get get back in the grind to have some doubters out there instead of instead of being you know just everyone going to give them next year's trophy as the massive favorite having like a little bit of doubt creeping in from the outside could do them some good and maybe make things a little more enjoyable for them. Right. Instead of just being, you know, the massive favorite and everyone says that it's just an inevitability that you're going to win it. Like for them to get back to, to feeling like they need to go earn it. And, you know, I know there's there's people that would question why in the world could you ever do that? You know, it's interesting. Softball, the pinnacle is college. They have professional softball, but it's not anything like college softball as far as the eyeballs and the and the amount of views you get. So this is like it's it's LeBron going back to Cleveland, right? Now he got kind of forced into that situation to some degree, but I I think she honestly sees this as an opportunity to go back to Nebraska, shine a spotlight on on that program, on that state, as far as softball is concerned, and see if she can 
win a title for her for her hometown and her her home state. Like, I think it's, in, I think it's, I think it's like superstars hell, honestly. Correct. If you know what I'm saying, like that that was my so my initial thought. I'll just be real and listen. I'm gonna miss Jordy Ball and watching her pitch. It was electric to watch in person. But my initial thought was, hey, we got Patty Gasso. Oklahoma softball is going to be just fine. Right? I'm just being honest. That was sure. that was my initial thought. And just from what I understand, this, this had been something that the Ball family, and it's something like mostly her dad, had been pushing for for quite some time. So, and that's what stood out to the statement. I, I read between the lines a, a little bit because she said, he, here's, here's what the statement said. I'm excited thinking about growing the game that has provided so many opportunities for growth in my home state, a current overlooked state for girls in softball at all ages. And I'm excited to finish the softball journey right where it began. I think, I think she wants to carry a team. I think, and and I don't mean this in a negative way. I think she wants it to be the Jordy Ball show. And there's a lot of there's a lot of things that come with that, right? But that that involves you know influencing young girls and building the the sport up in your home state. Like there's a, I I don't mean like she wants it to be the Jordy Ball show. I don't mean that in a negative way. I think she wants to carry her home. St- their home state's team. It's like I've it's got this. World Series. I've got and, this massive spotlight. I'm gonna yeah. go use it. Yeah. yeah, and a big part of me thinks it's pretty damn cool. Yeah. Now, does it suck for us OU fans? Yeah, you're losing the best pitcher in college softball. You're losing the most outstanding player at the Women's College World Series, who was fantastic, right? Especially in the championship series, but she was. She was fantastic. She was fantastic the entire thing, right? She was essentially untouchable. But I I get it, right? You've won two national titles. You, what else is there for her to accomplish at Oklahoma? Do I wish she was staying? Absolutely. Absolutely, I do. Do I think OU softball is going to be just fine? Absolutely. But I also, we, we hear, we hear them talk about growing the game all the time. I think this is a way for the sport of softball to grow some more. If she can go do something special in Nebraska. Now, if they finish in the middle of the pack in their conference and don't make the women's college world series, then we're all probably going to go. Well, that didn't. Right. That that didn't go according to plan, but I'm expecting her to do something special. I'll give you the flip side of that, which I totally agree. I and frankly, I hope I hope she takes Nebraska to the women's college world series. I hope that's the case. I think that's I hope OU story. and Nebraska play each other in the championship series and OU stomps them. That's what <laughs> I hope. I know. Like that the, that could that is the best possible story that could happen to softball. Hundred percent. Um, here's here's the other option that I'm leaving open, leaving room for. Sounds like the there's pressure cooker up there in the softball program, and it's totally understandable. Um, not that. It was n- not a like it, it. It kind of forced on them by all the expectations and everything. That was the sense when when we had Patty on, and even hearing her talk about it after they had won the whole damn thing, it yeah. sounded. And, and she's got to do a way. She's got to find a way to navigate it, and those players have to find a way to navigate it. And maybe Jordy Ball leaving is exactly like you mentioned, exactly what they needed, but they all seemed relieved that they didn't lose. Yeah. 
Yeah. That was the sense I got. It's like, okay, oh, we did what we we're supposed to do. Now they still had the the joy and the excitement while they were playing all the stuff, the celebrations, all that, but it it felt like a weight was lifted as opposed to them really expressing like a ton of and, joy. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's what I'm talking about. You know, there is, there's something about going and playing the game that you love and playing it in anonymity to a certain degree, right? To where not every single game is packed full of, crazy fans and you know if you don't if you don't throw a shutout you know it was a bad night and if you don't win 50 games in a row well then something happened you know because you guys were supposed to do it like there's something to that and i'm not like i said i'm i'm it's just kind of the flip side to the to the whole thing is like i want to go somewhere where I can be like somewhat a normal, normal student, normal person and play the game I love without the massive spotlight. Now, is that what it is? I don't know. It just sounds like there was a lot of, you know, sports psychologist meetings and you hear all the pressure that was going on out there. Like you, you can go do like, like I said, it's superstar as hell, but it's also, it's low pressure. She's already proved how good she is. I, if you go to Nebraska and you guys don't get it done, well, it's not going to be because Jordy Ball couldn't get it done. I, we've all already seen that she can get it done. So, I mean, I, the pressure can ruin the game for you. You got a small amount of time to play it in it's softball, right? It's you better enjoy it while you're doing it. And if, if it had robbed the game I, of everything that you love to be in that pressure cooker nonstop, then go play it where you get some enjoyment out of it. Yeah. It, you just don't see this though, right? I mean, I think I looked it up. Nebraska was 36 and 22 this year went 13 and 10 in conference play. Not horrible. She's leaving the best program in the sport, right? You're the best player on the best team that just won a third national title in a row. And you're going, you're leaving that to go play for a team that was barely over 500 in its conference. I don't even know what the college football equivalent of this is. There's not one. It's only professional sports. Yeah, it's I I don't know. It's only professional sports is the only is the only equivalent. Like LeBron James, like we've heard of we've heard of guys maybe taking less money to to go to go back somewhere and play maybe where they're from or I uh, You it, less money? With the way that Nebraska's been able to mobilize, no, no, that no, no. I'm not. Stuff. I'm not saying. I'm, I'm not no, saying I'm just she saying is. That there, I hope she she's getting paid, paid. Paid. She's. She better be getting care. paid. Paid. She better be. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm talking like in professional sports, like where, you know, someone may, in order to go, go back to where, to go win a championship at, at somewhere, they may take a, a smaller deal or something. Like, I. It's just you don't see it in college. College is always improving. Improve like the the big schools rarely lose anyone. Like we lost Caleb Williams, you know, Heisman Trophy winner. Wow. Um, two in a row. But you know, it's typically the players at the top schools stay put. And the players in the kind of the satellite schools, if you've had a couple of really good years, you go capitalize on it and go to one of the big schools. Yeah, so this is I, I didn't even know what to compare it to. Really, never seen seen it, and 
makes me sad that it's happening to this fan base. But I can only imagine how many pitchers have reached out to Patty Gasso already. Like, oh, Jordy Ball's gone? I would love to step in. So we'll see. I'm sure I'm sure they're going to have their pick of plenty of people. Now, never going to forget Jordy Ball, right? What she did for the program, but now nah, it's schedule them. Schedule them. Absolutely. Schedule Absolutely. Schedule just, just make sure make sure ABC agrees to televise it, right? Let's grow this game, you know? Yep. Let's let's schedule. let's build the drama the suspense, but Jordy ball comes in to OU in their new stadium and breaks their winning streak. Yeah. Let's not schedule that one. <laughs> or at least, at least let's get, let's get a couple games in the new state. Let's rack up a couple wins in the new stadium before, before we put that one together. Don't make it the first game in there. Okay. Right. Is that fair? Right. That's fair. But yeah, I mean, Nicole may Kirsten deal. I mean, they're going to have arms. I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure that recruiting is going well and the portal will obviously be a a significant factor. But yeah, that was I mean, that was an absolute bombshell in the softball world. But it does sound like there's some some serious family dynamics at play with that whole thing. And I hope I hope she goes and crushes it in Nebraska. Yeah. It it would be it'd be unfortunate for the sport if she doesn't. My my fear is that, you know, she just kind of disappears like, and doesn't get the exposure. Because you ever seen a Nebraska softball game on TV? I haven't. And that's I didn't where know Nebraska had a softball program. Until I agree with that. I didn't want to say it, but I didn't know they had a softball ago. team. Because <laughs> they'd never been in the World Series. They'd never been in one of the regionals or the super regionals that I've been watching. I did. But if she can take that program and turn it into something, I, I, that would be, that'd be big time. But I just, she's got such a dynamic personality and she's so damn talented. It's, I, I just don't want her to kind of disappear. Yeah. You know, I don't, I, I, in, in irrelevance is that's a harsh word, right? But that's, she, she could have been, and maybe she still will be, the face of the sport in the sport's best team. And there's so many opportunities and so many things that can come from that. We'll see if she's able to make something special happen there in Nebraska. Yeah. I hope she does. I only hope that she's happy. That's it. And – if that means that Nebraska flounders around in the Big Ten, but she's happy to be in Nebraska and where she's from, I mean, see, I, I've seen the kid compete. I know she doesn't look like someone that wants to lose a lot. I so know. that's right. And yes, we should we should have started with that, right? Her happiness and well being, like that, is the most important thing. Right? She's a college athlete. It's always the most important thing. Maybe we don't say that enough, but I, she does not look like a person that would take losing well. No, just from what we've been able to witness, like hyper, hyper competitive. Yeah, you know what's interesting? We're not sure how she takes losing. You know, <laughs> I'm not sure she knows because didn't she like dominated Nebraska? high school softball then went to the best program in the country and dominated you could probably count on one hand the amount of games she's lost as a softball player Uh, especially when she's pitching yeah so pretty pretty crazy yeah but we'll see unfortunately we had her for two years thankful we had her for two years absolutely huge 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 piece of these last two national championship runs for for Oklahoma softball. Didn't seem it coming. 
I'm more worried about the 2024 SEC schedule than I am about OU softball struggling without. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. (laughs) All right, let's finish up with our winners and losers of the week. But first... Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School represents a tradition of educational excellence in Oklahoma City. Grounded in a faith-based education, students prepare to meet their potential with an individualized academic path that strives for success. Bishop McGinnis offers a college prep curriculum that includes 22 AP courses, participation in OSSAA athletics where they've won over 100 state championships, and numerous clubs and organizations for students to join and grow. If you want to provide the best possible educational and spiritual development for your children, Contact Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School or visit bmchs.org. Financial aid is available. And attention, business owners, you need Insurica in your life. Insurica is one of the country's largest insurance brokers with 30 offices throughout Oklahoma, Texas, and the Southwest. Insurica compares coverage offerings and pricing in order to a cost-effective comprehensive program to meet your business's specific needs. Purchasing insurance is only one way to protect your business. Insurica's goal is to help you avoid a loss in the first place. If your business partners with Insurica, you'll save huge amounts of money and control your total cost of risk. I'm an Insurica client, and you should be too. If your business wants to be best in class, connect with Insurica at Insurica.com. That's I-N-S-U-R-I-C-A dot com. As always, Ted, kick us off. Who do you have as your winner of the week? Oral Roberts University. Men's College World Series. So huge, cool. Huge favorite to win the Jello shot competition there in um, Omaha. I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> I don't know about that one, Jim. First trip since 1978. Absolutely red hot right now. Uh, if they wouldn't have lost that game at Oregon, I think you have to go back to like, early April since they've lost a game sometime in April, uh, just on an incredible heater. And they were up eight Oh in the game. They lost to Oregon, which is like, I think the record is now in, in postseason is like 96 and one for teams that have an eight Oh lead in a game. Incredible fun to watch a uh, talented team. And you know, we, we saw a little bit of this last year ourselves. You get hot at the right time. Who knows what could happen? And, you know, I'm no baseball ex- expert, but from the people I've heard talk about it, it's not like they don't belong there. I, yeah. They they are – they're in it. They're not going to be a favorite by any means, and it's going to be a tough path. But, hey, chip in a chair. I'm just happy to see that, uh, that, that, that they made it, and I think it's an incredible story. Yeah, they get – they get – TCU on Friday. So I am, I know who I'm going to be rooting for at the Vince College World Series. Easy. Easy I don't really pick. care about any other team. I'm it, I'm cheering for the team that resides in Oklahoma, baby. Come awesome. on, Oral Roberts. Let's go. Isn't it awesome to, to have, have, you know, I know it's not like, it's like the ultimate bandwagon situation, but who cares, right? Yeah. Give me a reason to watch. Um, you know, I'm all for it. It can be it can be a little more difficult if you don't have any type of rooting interest. And now that we've got one, I'm all for it. Sign me up. I think it's going to be awesome. Yeah, I'm going to be rooting for Oral Roberts and keeping a close eye on Tennessee and LSU. Right? Both really good. Yeah, both very good. And uh, we've talked a lot about the football schedule. The, the baseball schedule is going to be. Whew. Hey. I think, I honestly think it's going to help our baseball program a lot. Florida's in it too. So three SEC teams, right? Three of the eight? Yeah. What you got? Florida, Tennessee, LSU, Wake, TCU. Virginia, TCU. No argument. Stanford? One more. Yeah, Stanford beat Texas on the, uh, oh, brutal. Oh, all right. Who do you have as your loser? of the week keeping it quick there's starting to be some rumors floating around on some uh some trade nba stuff zion williams name floating around out there the loser is anyone who's considering accepting a trade 
with Zion. Don't do it. Don't do it. You know what you're getting. It's damaged goods, Gabe. Are you talking about like his body or I don't know if you've heard any of these things about his personal life. Personal life is that's what happens when you have a lot of free time and you're not playing a bunch of basketball games. That's true. Okay. That lady has been on one on Twitter. Oh my gosh. Those tweet threads are insane. If you don't know what we're talking about, go look it up, but don't do it. If you're on your work computer, (laughs) that's, that's the best way I can put it. But yes, I, you, we've talked about this so many times. I feel like now it just, is he ever going to be healthy? The fact that he is, and I know that his body is, you know, he's different, but dude, you got to lean out. Yeah. And New Orleans, maybe New Orleans is, maybe he just needs to get away. Too much good cuisine. There's a lot of good cuisine down there, but he got to change something or he's going to end up being on one of the, you know, those bust lists. You don't want to be on that list. It, the, the, the good thing for him is he's still shockingly young. He's like still 21 or 22, right? Yeah, which is alarming that he's been, been hurt so much already. I know, it, and that was the other part is... 22 years old. 22. It, it's only going to become more difficult as he gets older. It's not going to get easier to keep the weight off. And, you know, he he's massive and he's explosive as hell, but he didn't have a whole lot of other skills, right? And the only way you develop skills is by playing basketball and... Like that stuff's going to continue to be harder and harder for him to maintain. I feel bad. I hate it. Like he, he was so promising and off to such a a good start. And it's like, we've been robbed of, of what could have been one of the more entertaining players uh, to play in a long time. I mean, he's what I like. I like guys that jump high and try and tear the rim off the backboard. That's, that's what I like to see. So um, it's, it's been tough. I feel bad for him, but man, you got to take, you got to take ownership of it, lean out, stay healthy, start getting on the, on the, uh, on the court. Yeah. I would not make that trade. I would make, I'd make the Pelicans eat that contract for as long as possible. I I don't know. I don't and- be the spot that they were in, you know, to, to when his contract came up, it's like, what do you do? Had to do the extension, right? Yeah. Heard their GM talk about it on multiple podcasts. Had to do the extension. And mm, I hope he gets back though. I really I really do, but no, I would not. I well, I say I wouldn't trade for him. Let me know what that trade package is looking like, and then and then we could talk. Everyone has their price. It's gonna be painful for the, for New Orleans, though. Oh it yeah. Would be painful. Oh yeah. All right, let's get to my winner and loser. But first, John Vance Auto Group has been serving Oklahoma's for 40 years. Family owned and operated. They got nine full service dealerships in Woodward, Miami, and Guthrie. No matter what your vehicle needs are, John Vance Auto Group has you covered. They carry domestic brands such as Ford, Lincoln, Chevy, Buick, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Ram, Jeep, and Wagoneer. John Vance Auto Group's goal is to give unequaled service and to exceed customers expectations in every way which is why they have their lifetime loyalty program and here's how it works buy a new or used car from them then all you have to do is get all of the manufacturer recommended maintenance done at the vance dealership and if something goes wrong with the components of your engine transmission drive axle or transfer unit they'll cover the repair cost it's a fantastic deal you can browse their entire inventory or find the john vance dealership near you at vance auto group Dot com. And First Fidelity Bank is a full-service financial institution based in Oklahoma with tailored solutions for all your personal and business needs. Checking accounts, saving accounts, home loans, and much more. They do it all. Whether it's online banking from your computer or mobile banking from your phone, everything is stress-free with FFB. 
Making mobile deposits, paying bills online, and moving money to different accounts could not be easier. Ladies and gentlemen, make your life easier and go bank with First Fidelity Bank. Visit FFB.com for more information. All right, for my winner of the week, thought about going with the Vegas Golden Knights, man. That was one dominant gentleman's sweep. My goodness. What? They they ended, what was it, nine to three? Not a they, typical hockey score. No, that that crowd was celebrating for essentially two straight periods. That place looked nuts. It looked like so much fun. Not, not exactly the drama I was looking for. I only watch playoff hockey and that Stanley Cup final. That sucked. And all credit to Vegas. They were incredible and dominated the Panthers. But my goodness, that was I didn't, a beatdown. I didn't watch it, but. You it didn't makes, miss much. It makes sense now that you say that because I saw a clip of like right after the game was over and someone said, uh, this Vegas crowd is terrible. It looks like they're celebrating a preseason win because everyone was just kind of like standing there. <laughs> but yeah, as you pointed out, they've already been going crazy for two whole periods. You know, it's like you're catching, it's winding down at that point when the game's ending. Yeah. No, but it was, it was, that was impressive stuff. But my winner of the week, we have not done a pod since the Nuggets won. Denver Nuggets got it done. Ted in it, the, the decisive game. It was not pretty. It was not a pretty basketball game. It was very ugly, but Jimmy Butler made it very interesting at the end. Just went on that scoring spree, but Nuggets were just too good. Too big, too physical. Jokic just too special. Jamal Murray is fantastic, right? Throughout the series, throughout the playoffs. And now you look at that team moving forward with those two guys, and we'll see. Michael Porter Jr. seems like a very, very, very good third piece for them moving forward, but that is the squad that is going to be a big factor in the NBA over the next I don't know, five, six years, depending on how long Jokic's prime lasts. Yeah, and I guess you never know what happens with success, right? But I doesn't it feel like a very um, low maintenance team? Yeah, Denver? like compared to like some of the like remember Golden State always felt like because like Draymond is the main reason, but it always felt like it was uh, like one practice uh conflict from falling apart you know i are there two players in the nba more different than jokic and draymond from the way that they carry themselves you know no. what i mean did you no. see the clip of jokic after the game when they told him the parade wasn't until thursday I was like, oh no no i gotta go home <laughs> no, gotta no, go no. Home. <laughs> no 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 it just it, yeah, Jokic and, could fall asleep over there whenever he, he takes a couple of minutes in the fourth quarter. Like uh, you bring him over to the bench, he could take a nap over there. The guy's so so like low, mellow. I mean, that's part of his that's part of what makes his game so special. He's he's the strangest superstar I can remember. Like Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan was a superstar. But and I guess may, I, I don't know if that's the best comparison. I'm not talking about their basketball games. I'm just, I mean, like how low key and it, even though I think Jokic is pretty funny, some of his press conference stuff, like his sarcasm and his delivery, it's fantastic. He had to be funny. He was a little fat kid for most of his life that had two psychotic, gigantic older brothers. <laughs> yes. I mean, he plays the role perfectly. <laughs> yes. just, that's just naturally what happens. Yeah, that's just how it, that's how life goes. But. <laughs> I, just such an interesting, interesting star, right? I think a lot of people would agree, best player in the league now and just doesn't have a lot to say, just His shows up. lasting power, man. Oh, my gosh. You know? He's not a guy that gets by on, not to say that he's not athletic. He is, but like, you feel like his game will just last forever. Yeah, that's why I think he's 28 now. And usually like that 28 to 33 
is kind of that that prime window for NBA players. Now, LeBron kind of skews everything and the way that people think about yeah. that stuff, but Denver should be damn good. I mean, he's not going anywhere, and there's going to be a lot of people that want to play with him. I just, I think they're they're going to be, they're going to be in this thing for a while. Yeah, I agree. No, yeah, and I he I think he's got lasting power as long as he wants to play. He already plays like a fifty year old, you know, just kind of meandering around. He's looks like he'll probably never get hurt too because he's just kind of wobbly out there. I guess you know. I'm, I don't know. It's just it's fascinating. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Have you ever has, has there ever been a like the best player in a sport that is not at least close to one of the most athletic? He is. He is huge. Yeah. Like when you see him down on the court level, like he's a massive guy and he runs way better than people give him credit for. But but he ain't Shaq. No, he's not dunking all over people. Right. No, no, he's his skill. Like his strengths are in just different spots when it comes to skill on the basketball floor. It's like the yeah, thinking really piece of the game yeah. and he shooting, passing, ball handling, all these things. It's a really good rebounder, even though he didn't get off the ground very much. Like, I I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's fun to watch in a very weird way. And like you mentioned it, I can't, I don't think he's going to slow down. He can't slow down much more. Like, I don't think he's going to, I don't see like, him falling off some cliff like you see some guys fall off a cliff. Some guys have to like totally reinvent their game when they right. start to lose their legs and just feel like you just do what he does forever. Yeah, we'll see. But congrats to the Nuggets. And apparently everything Stan Kroenke touches turns to gold currently in the sports world. My he's on, God, he's what a run. run. That's it's impressive. All right, for my loser of the week, thought about going with Jay Monahan been a stressful time huh yikes that didn't i mean they released a statement he's recovering from some medical situation i guy's been going through it these last couple months i don't know, just hope he's all right yeah that that does not does not sound good no i who knows what it is i have no idea um i hope he's okay uh it might be his reason to step aside all right yeah it's like it's been nice. I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> it's Maybe a nice strange, severance package. Yeah. It's been a strange like that is some of the most shocking news in the sports world to wake up to is like, oh, okay. <laughs> Fascinating. That was wild. Yeah. But so we'll hopefully Jay Monahan is okay, but that's not doesn't sound great. Now my loser of the week, it's it's a little different, but I'm going with Texas Tech. Now, on one hand, I love the fact they announced they're going to induct Mike Leach into their Hall of Honor. He's the winningest head coach in the history of the school. I think he took that, that program to the highest level. We've seen it, right, in, in a long, long time. But... It's it's just so unfortunate that it took him dying for this to all happen. And really, they never, I mean, they never hashed it out, right? And according to ESPN, that that lawsuit, right? It, what was he seeking, like two and a half million from him or something like that? Still ongoing. It, it, just the entire situation, right? Us losing him seemingly out of nowhere, right? And then them not having this worked out while he was still alive. And I just, I just don't, it was, it was one of those things where I looked at it, I was like, damn it, that's, that's why you don't hold, hold grudges. That's why you work stuff out because you, you never know. And I really, I, I was happy to see the announcement, but I also was like, damn, that is... That's unfortunate because Texas Tech and 
you know, and Mike Leach, it, it seems like they never, they never worked it out. Yeah. It's crazy too, because what year was that? Oh, 2010 ish. What was his last year at tech? They had the, they had the awesome team in 08 that that was the jump around game. Right. So mm -hmm. yeah. Cause he recruited me. So yeah, he had to be there through at least, cause, did he get fired the next year? Cause of the, you know, the James thing, his last yeah. year at tech was Oh nine. Yeah. Oh nine. So, and they went eight and four, by the way, what's crazy is he hasn't, he wasn't there since Oh nine coached at Washington state for a long time, went to Mississippi state. And he's still like the face of Texas tech. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how people still like remember him. It's, it's, it's crazy. And the fact that they couldn't figure out a way to squash that deal. And, you know, he had a legitimate claim. I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but I'll, I always, it's, I've forgotten most of it, but always felt like he had a, a very legitimate claim to whatever it was they owed him. And it wasn't all that much at the time. Like that two and a half million has grown. It, I, I want to say it was like 800,000 or something like that uh, whenever it originally happened. So yeah, that is, that is frustrating. And, you know, it is cool that they're doing what they are, but I think everyone is still going to be like, yeah, but you know, remember that money, that thing. And I know it was a legal battle with everything that went down there. Did he lock him in the closet? Like all that stuff. Right. But I don't know, man, the fact that you're winning as coach ever, it, it had to take him passing away before really you even acknowledged him. Yeah. It's just, I don't know, man. It just, I saw it and it, I'm not going to lie, just bummed me out. Yeah. And while I was, while I was sitting there a little bummed out, there was a big part of me. I wish we could just hear what he would say about the situation. You stick a microphone in that guy's face and you say, Mike, hypothetical. You, you die from heart issues. You haven't resolved things with Texas tech, but they're going to put you in the, the hall of honor, your thoughts. I can only imagine, man. I mean, this. It's going to be a while. He's going to have some. <laughs> All we really need I, it, for it to come full circle is we need a um, some type of, of hacker out there, whatever. Whenever they go to play like the ceremonial like video of all the, you know, the, the emotional Mike Leach moments and all the stuff, you play the Baylor post game. That's it. That's all you need right there in the stadium, full volume. <laughs> That's that would be the send off. One of the best college football clips. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm going to miss Mike Leach. I'm going to miss him. All right. Episode 327 in the books. We'll have a new podcast that'll drop Sunday. Just a reminder Sunday is Father's Day. So don't forget to tell your dad happy Father's Day. Don't forget. You were warned. You were reminded. So that is not an excuse. You can hear Teddy from 3 to 6 on 94.7 The Ref. You can hear me on Sirius XM Big 12 Radio, channel 375. Hope you all have a great rest of your week. Have an awesome weekend. And until next time, we appreciate you all for listening. Do what you always do, Oklahoma. Take care of each other.